Hi, now here we have an example then on the normal distribution which you might like to try. Just pause the video, come back when ready and I'll run through the solution with you. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. So what we've got here is the heights of an adult female population and normally distributed with mean 162 centimetres and standard deviation 7.5 centimetres. And what we've got to do is find the probability that a randomly chosen adult female is taller than 150 centimetres. Now the first thing that I'd want to do for a question like this is define the random variable. I'm going to just say let x be the random variable. Okay, let x be the random variable. Put rv for short. Okay, and what it's going to be is going to be the height of the female. Okay, height of female. And that's measured in centimetres. Okay, we'll just put that in centimetres. And we need to say that this is distributed. We can say where x is distributed as a normal distribution. And in the normal distribution, we have two parameters, the mean and the variance. Well, we know the mean is 162 centimetres. And we know the standard deviation is 7.5 centimetres. So the variance would be 7.5 squared. I'm going to just write 7.5 squared rather than actually physically working out what that value is. I often find that's a bit pointless to do that. Okay, so the next thing I'd want to do is draw a sketch graph of our normal distribution for x. I always feel that this too pays off in many questions. So we'd have a kind of bell shape here graph okay, we've got something looking like this okay and we know that this value here is the mean of 162 and we're trying to find the probability a random chosen adult female is taller than 150 centimeters so if we just put 150 centimeters over here this is an observed value so I call it little x for the observed value and that is 150 and that probability is represented by the area to the right of 150. Remember the area under the whole graph comes to 1. Now the next thing I'd want to do is draw the standardized normal distribution graph directly beneath this one. That's the one that's got Z in it. And this graph would again be bell shaped like so and it has a mean of zero. We're looking for this value of z that corresponds to the 150. I'll just mark it down here as z, okay? And that probability is represented by the probability of being more than this particular z value. Now we should know that z is always worked out as being equal to the observed value minus the mean all divided by the standard deviation sigma. So for what we've got here the observed value is 150 minus the mean 162 all divided by the standard deviation sigma which is 7.5. And if you work this out you end up with minus 1.6. And by having a sketch here as well, it always helps just so you can check your value back. You're expecting a negative value. It's to the left of the zero here. And this value always represents the number of standard deviations you are above or below the mean. In this case, it's a minus value, so you are 1.6 standard deviations below the mean. So, once we've got this then, we're asked to work out the probability that our random variable x, that's the height of the female in centimetres, is greater than 150. And to do this, this is exactly the same as working out the probability that z is more than 
minus 1.6. Okay, because this value here is minus 1.6. In fact, we'll just pop that one in there. Okay, minus 1.6. Now, we need tables to work this out. The problem is, though, when we have the tables, I'll just bring an extract up for you, they work out the probability of z being less than a particular value of z. And that value of z is generally to the right of your zero value here. We've got minus 1.6, which is to the left. But we can use the symmetry of the graph. We can say that, OK, the area to the right of minus 1.6, if I was to mirror this across to the other side, and call this value 1.6, it's going to be the same as the probability of being less than 1.6. So we can change this round to saying z is less than 1.6. And then all we need to do is look in our tables for z being 1.6. And in this set of tables, which I've taken an extract, we see it's 1.60 here. And that value is 0 0.9452, 0.9452, just a little over 94%. And again, having a sketch here helps because we can see that this area is certainly more than half. So it's got to be a value more than 0 0.5. So as I say, having a sketch down the side here really does help to check whether your answer looks sensible. OK, well, that brings us now to the end of this part of the question. And I hope that uh, if you were having some difficulty, that you've been able to follow my methods. Don't forget, there's always more examples, tutorials, etc. on my website, examsolutions.net. OK.